What's up guys? Thought I'd come on today and uh, talk a little bit about herbivore stuff. Um, get a lot of requests for talking more about the herbivore lifestyle. Thought I'd talk a little bit about um, what it's like being married to a Japanese woman. Um, first of all, um, when I got married in America to my first Japanese wife, um, in America she was, I met her in college in 98, and uh, it was a really kind of fast thing. Uh, most of my relationships have been. So I, I met her, and uh, within three months of meeting her, we were already married, and she was pregnant after, in the first month we met. So she was pregnant with my son, who's 16 now. And uh, we met, uh, I think she was there already for like two months, maybe somewhere like that, in uh, her uh, first semester. And uh, she had came in the fall semester, and I had met her uh, around the time of like Halloween, a little bit before Halloween, maybe two or three weeks before. And... Uh, when I met her, she was kind of like uh, an average, you know, girl. I thought, you know, she was jeans and t-shirt, kind of, you know, normal girl, I thought. And uh, the, something that not I noticed right away is something that uh, we don't really do in America. Most American people that are watching this will know. Um, once we got married, she was constantly saying like I want a divorce you know that kind of stuff she'd just throw that out there real quick and uh, the way we are in America we don't uh, we don't say that unless we mean it and they just kinda of throw it around out here because they don't really uh, respect each other in a relationship it's not something they do here so um, what happened was um, she was a nurse and she'd already been a nurse for about 14 years. When I met her, she was six years older than I was. And I was 25, I think, somewhere around there, 26, when I met her. And she was 31. And she had already been a nurse since she was like 18. She, she went to a nursing college and got a nursing degree. And she came to America to become an oncology nurse. So she was hoping to uh, study nursing. And... Uh, we uh, we started dating, and uh, I took her to meet my parents in uh, th for Thanksgiving, and uh, everything was going great. You know, thought it was going good, uh, but I was having trouble with uh, jobs, and uh, we ended up going to uh, Japan, moving to Japan in uh, in uh, 2000 in July. And once we moved back to Japan, um, I was I was teaching English, and I started doing that for about six months. And while I was teaching English, uh, it was kind of an off and on kind of thing. I was home taking care of my son while she was working as a nurse. Well, her mother never really thought I think she was going to get married and her mother uh, never taught her how to uh, cook uh, take care of the house anything like that so once she was married she uh, decided to um, start taking care of my kids um, kind of took the role on and I was I was known as Ma Pa, and I took care of my kids, and I took I did the diapers and the laundry and the dishes and everything, and uh, she didn't think that that was good because that would, should have been my wife's duties, so um, she decided to do those duties, and it started out at first um, she was doing it maybe like. Uh, you know, once or twice a week, she would take them to the house and and uh, feed them, you know, things like that. 
and that's this is kind of an insidious thing that they do here in Japan that I found out is really typical and it's the reason why we have so many problems that we have here in Japan is because a lot of the culture kind of like in America how they teach religion um, it's an insidious thing that gets passed on from generation to generation because the new generation doesn't uh, not allow the stuff to continue on so what we have here is we have like a three generation split where the grandparents are teaching the children the children's children things from the old ways and that makes things kind of like uh, you know you gotta get out 100, 150 years out before you drop off these old world ideas you know so her parents uh, her mother uh, started taking care of my kids uh, started teaching them things, uh, really strange things. I came over one day and uh, there was a lady that lived by our house and she had a son who had gotten a fever and his fever went to like 106 and he became uh, mentally handicapped from that. And uh, I knew about that obviously, but my wife being the nurse, but I came over to the grandmother's house and she was doing things like like they didn't have medicine you know and she was uh, my son had a, a fever and she had him wrapped up in a blanket and the house was already like you know 75 80 degrees inside the house with no air conditioning on and she's got him wrapped up in a blanket she's trying to break his fever and his fever was like a hundred and four and she's wrapping him up in a blanket and he's crying and, and carrying on and I had to like take him out of there I just like took him out because you know they're, they're just stupid you know they they don't have a lot of sense you know that's how a lot of these Japanese people are they don't have a lot of sense uh, me uh, with my with if, if any of you guys have watched my previous videos you know that I was uh, burned by my mother she put me in a hot bathtub well, my uh, uh, father-in-law uh, was giving my son a bath, and he had ran the bath water, and he didn't even check the bath water to see if it was hot. And he went to put my son in the bath water, and it was really hot. My son started crying, and I actually had to go in and grab him, and because of my childhood, I was like, I was like yelling at him. I was like, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" And I like took him and just walked home with him, naked. <laughs> took him all the way back to the house. I was like, "This is fucking bullshit, man." You know, your parents are fucking crazy. And this is the kind of things you have to put up with in Japan if you have uh, grandparents taking care of your kids, which is what is a typical thing that happens here in Japan, especially with uh, a lot of people not being able to afford daycare. Because daycare in Japan is quite quite expensive per hour, so um, they will actually uh, leave them with grandparents, and by doing that, um, like her mother at the time was like uh, seventy six or something like that, you know, and uh, the the problem with that is in America, if you think about it, you know, the the people that are in their seventies remember when there was segregation and you know they they lived through like uh, you know the Holocaust and, and things like that and they remember that stuff and while it's cool that they can teach stuff like that when they teach your kids how to live th that way which is really just an obsolete way of, of living now it's it's like useless knowledge and it's also how a lot of things like Buddhism and Muslim and, you know, fundamentalist uh, propaganda gets, gets perpetrated, you know. It gets thrown into the population by doing that. And that's something that happens here, you know. And what happened was, in the course of uh, the first year, basically, I was able to spend with my son but it slowly 
um, towards the end of that first year after we moved in July and by February or March of the next year um, she was already like taking my son like five or six days a week and I was hardly seeing him and I started working doing uh, car exporting to Australia and New Zealand and England and America and Mexico and uh, when I was doing that uh, I would be at auctions till really late at night and um, I would come home and there was days where I wouldn't even see my kids and my wife was a nurse and sometimes she would work two days in a row she wouldn't see them either so they'd end up staying at the grandparents house um, they would end up uh, doing the laundry for the kids you know stuff like this and eventually it, it got to the point where I hardly ever seen my kids at all, you know. And then uh, what happened was we had another son in 2001, and uh, it was like maybe three months after she had the baby. Not even that. I don't even think. I I think she wasn't very old. It was like three months, and uh, and uh, my son instead of staying home with me she decided to take her to a daycare so she she took my son to a daycare and she went back to work and I was exporting cars working on the internet and stuff like this and I and I didn't really have to worry about it and I was home so there's no reason why I couldn't take care of my little son but she decided to do that. So and then as he got older, she had her mother taking care of him, you know, and the others and my other son. So it, it got to the point where I started to realize and I started to talk to other people that this is common. This is a common thing. Basically what I think what it is is they're actually trying to literally get the sons and daughters of of uh, the kids to uh, break away from the father and have the father be uh, not really part of the family and that's a common thing that happens here the fathers are really not uh, part of the family they're not part of anything what their job is is to be an ATM machine their job is to work 16 hours a day, 90, 80 to 90 hours a week, give all their money to the wife, maybe get two to five hundred dollars a month to spend on something they want, like food or something they might want to do, and the rest of the money goes to the family. And as long as they do that, they're a good husband. They don't ever have to spend any time with the family, you know. And if they do, it's more of like a I don't know. I, w I don't even know how you would say it. It's kind of like a, a privilege or something to actually spend some time with your wife and kids where you would go to like Disneyland or something. And if you want to spend time with your kids, it's almost like you have to uh, do something with them. You know, you have to you have to take them to some place like there's a place here called a uh, rabbit island, you know, and uh, or go go someplace to like a strawberry farm or something on the weekend when you're not working you know so if you're if you're able to do something like that then you can hang out with your kids if you're not then you're usually at work you come home you know your wife might make you some food and then you go to bed and you get up in the morning really early sometimes before your kids ever even get up and you leave so you might only see your kids on the weekend you know if you're lucky you know, and sometimes what will happen is the wife will go out alone with the kids, even on the weekend. So you, you might be home not working on a Sunday, and she, you know, you might wake up late because it's, it's Sunday and you want to sleep in. You'll wake up at like 9 or 9.30, and she's already gone with the kids. The kids are gone. They're, they're gone all day long. They leave. So you'll wake up at 9. Nobody's home, you know. So you'll have breakfast and get bored. Maybe you'll go out and, and do something. And then you'll come home 
and the kids might come home at like you know six or seven o'clock at night and your wife will make dinner or bring dinner home to you or something like that and then you'll go to bed because you might have to get up like you know five or six in the morning to go to work so you'll go to sleep at like eight or nine at night you know and if they get home at nine you might only have like two or three hours that you've spent basically the entire week with your kids on a Sunday you know and this is life in Japan and this is why we're having such a big issue and this is why the herbivore men are becoming such a big thing here because when you have a when you have a society like that and the kids grow up with the grandparents and they see the dynamic between the grandparents and they see the dynamic between their parents and they never see their father they grow up uh, as a woman they don't care you know the woman is just you know women here they don't they don't care they just want to get married and have kids and they don't they don't consciously think about these things because the way they perceive a, a relationship in Japan is a way of, a man does is completely different because obviously if you're married to a husband you're gonna have a great life in Japan you're gonna have a car you're gonna have a house you're gonna have kids you're not gonna have to work you know you can stay home you get shit tons of money you never have to see your husband you hardly ever have to fuck him you know and you just get to have fun and if you want to when your husband's gone 90 hours a week and your your kids are off at, at school you can go out with a boyfriend and have have sex with a boyfriend you know and that's typically what happens here in Japan so it's it's a it's a it's a very common dynamic here to have this kind of stuff go on it's also why a lot of men have relationships outside of their outside of their uh, wives just because it's 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 very it's very disheartening to see to, to live with a woman in Japan and realize that that I think eventually the men realize it but it takes them a while to get into that kind of herbivore mindset where they realize the wife is using them and they're not getting anything out of it that's that's this is the thing with any relationship with a woman you don't really get anything out of it women have nothing to offer you you know you're you're not getting anything and once you're in a relationship, the only thing they have to offer you is kids and sex. And once you get into the relationship and you've had kids and they don't give you sex anymore, there's no reason to be in the relationship. Now you're stuck in the relationship and you have to be an ATM machine for her to take care of the kids that you have. And it's like they that's all they want from you. Once they get the kids, they know they're set for life and they know they've got you on the chain for life. Now they can do whatever they want. They don't have to have sex with you anymore. They don't have to let you touch them. They don't have to do anything with you. And they can control you now, you know? And this dynamic, the kids see, you know, in America and in Japan, but a lot in Japan. This is a big issue and a big problem why herbivores are becoming such a big thing here because when you see this kind of a dynamic with your parents and you see this kind of a dynamic as I talked about in one of my other videos with the PDA you know not touching your your spouse not kissing the spouse not associating anything in a relationship like love you know with your spouse in front of your children is that's harmful to your children literally you know your children learn about the sexual dynamic and about the love dynamic from the parents that's what that's how kids learn what it means to be in love so if you are always fighting with your spouse and you never touch each other you never hold each other you never want anything to do with each other really and every time you talk to each other it's barking and yelling at each other that's what your kids see and that's what they're learning that's going into their brain and that's what they think as they grow up that's what a relationship is that's what they feel which is why more and more kids are having these odd expectations because they know how they grew up but they see how their 
parents were, but they they watch these movies like love movies, love stories and shit, and they think that that's true love, but that doesn't exist. And what they seen with their parents, that's real. So they they have this idea. It's kind of kind of like 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 a break in their brain or something. They have this idea that what's on a movie is real. But the reality is what happened with their parents, you know? And when they get into a relationship, they're used to the dynamic that their parents had, but they have this idea that maybe it will be like it was in the movie, you know? So they're they're all fucked up in their head, you know? And in in Japan, we've gone way past that. We've gone gone way past that because it, it's been like this since, you know, the 1800s or longer. You know, it's just, this is a dynamic here. And the, the uh, child, the child, children being born here are, has been going down since 1976. So it's just going down and down and down and down. And less and less children are being born every year. They're closing schools all over in Kobe, and they're getting closed all over Japan. There's more and more people, and they're actually, because of the, 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 it's kind of stupid because they're being so strict about allowing people to come into the country, and because of that, they're choking them themselves out. You know, it's it's a really 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 sad thing, you know, to see. But that's that's a little bit more about herbivore man. If you guys got anything you wanna see me do or talk about on the herbivore side of things, uh, go ahead and let me know in the description below. And uh, if you like this video, share, like, and subscribe and comment below. And thanks for watching.